What up? What up? What's going on with you, man? <clears throat> hey, what's going on with that bike life tour? Oh, yeah. What's up with it? What's up with it? Where you at? Yo. I'm on. What's going on with you? <clears throat> Where our moderator at? He must be still booting up. Be patient, be patient. Yo, yo. He said, I'm going to call you in 12 minutes. Storm in the building. Who that? Juan, the man with the plan. Yeah, man, I'm trying to figure it out, man. I see you got it going over there, though. You got your whole love. Uh, your movie already ready. You just need cameras over there. What up, Juan? Allie, you trying to get in the live video? It's light work. <laughs> you definitely make it look like light work. <laughs> How the shop coming? You know, we still waiting on the building to uh, figure out what they're going to do about that insurance on that building. Oh, they go to the moderator right there. How I get a man. Mm, go live. Uh-oh, we got five viewers. What up? How you feeling? I'm doing good, you. Like it's ticking? Mm-hmm. Line this leg up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yo, my bad. I'm just getting off the shoot. Oh, no, um, you good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to rush in. So what's going on, man? Everything. Yeah? Trying not to uh, express my anger physically. <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Um... Who knows? Being 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 a black man is enough. Um, so right. um, so I'm glad I'm glad we got a chance to be able to do this. Um, oh yeah, no, me too. I'm really I'm really excited. Um, and uh, I know we got, we got about five people in there, so we 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 gonna we gonna start light. Um, so I guess first and foremost, let's talk about DB. Who's who's Donald Black? Who is Donald Black? That's a hell of a question. That's a hell of a question. Shit, you know, I'm just a simple kind of guy, you know, mm -hmm. from Cleveland, mm -hmm. who make art. Make art. That's mm -hmm. what's up. Uh, what, what kind of art are you making right now, these days? What am I making right now? Mm, what kind of art? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess art that's expressing how how I how I've probably been feeling my whole life, but I ain't really learned how to make make that kind of work until I got older. You know, which is okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The what? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, so you said how you been feeling your whole life. Can you kind of can you kind of break that down a little bit? Shit, it's like I've been feeling I've been feeling what it what it mean to be black my whole life. I just didn't okay. probably know that that's what it was. That's what was going on. Okay. So I've been making shit forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it got to the point where the people that I could show the work to, you know, that serve some kind of like teacher, mentor kind of role, mm -hmm. they stopped looking at that shit when the pictures started looking different. What do you, you mean? Know? How, do you, how do you mean? Well, Let's once... Close this window real quick. How do you... But keep, keep talking. It's like... <clears throat> it's like the moment I 
the moment I started making images that was in the direction of um, expressing what the hell was I expressing? It's, as soon as I try to start figuring myself out with the with the work, you know, once that once them pictures was black, consciously, <laughs> right, right, you know, right, all, right, all my tutelage, they just start, you know, they just flip past looking at the images, acting like I ain't just showing what I just showed them, right. Yeah. So, were you were you um for for people who tuning in that don't necessarily know, um Donald Black. In his uh, in his origin story, where are you from? Cleveland, Ohio. Born and raised, southeast okay. side, the whole southeast side. What, what's what's that landscape look like? Shit, it look like everybody, every city southeast side. <clears throat> you know, poverty. Okay. Dirty niggas. Mm -hmm. You know, Arab stores, trash on the street, smokers walking up and down the street, loud music, a lot of weed smoke smell. Right. You know, run down buildings, a lot of vacancy, you know, a lot of lots. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, uh, and, you know, I guess part of um, this conversation, you know, it might be a good idea to talk about, you know, why you and I are having this conversation or how we connected. You know, what was it like, 95? 94? 94, 95. Yeah. You and I, you and I first met. Yeah. Um, for those people tuning in, if you look at, you know, the facial structure, of Donald and I, you know, when we were about 14 or 15 years old, we worked at Kids Foot Locker together. Similar haircut. Similar yeah, everybody thought we were the same person. Everybody thought we was the same person. We had a similar timber uh, to our voice. So we were selling shoes at Kids Foot Locker. You know, um, Donald served as a customer. he go back and get the shoe. i come out the back room and motherfuckers cussing me out because they like, yo, where my shoes at? you like, what shoes? What do you <laughs> like, mean? What you they like, about? what? You don't, you don't remember? <laughs> right? And, um, and I, and I, and, you know, one of the most striking things about you, you know, not only, you know, it wasn't necessarily the similar look, it wasn't necessarily the voice or anything like that, but I'm like, yo, this dude is like 14, 15 years old talking about he's a photographer. The fuck is that? <laughs> right, right. Because that you know, not only was it a shock to find that that such a young person was learning to master the camera and that visual aesthetic, but the fact that you were black, right, right, yeah. And uh, so, and I know how we frame this conversation, and, and it may it, the, the it may shut down and, and it's gonna come back up, but um, but what? How does how does uh? So wait, wait, wait. So we met at 15 years old. Yeah. 14, 14, 15 years old. Um, stayed friends throughout our whole high school career. Similar friends, similar, uh, similar neighborhood. Right. Um, and then four, four or five years later, we end up at the same university. Right. Um, and um, both of us were on on a similar journey, but in, in different ways. We both were trying to tell stories about where we came from, trying to break down where we came from. In real talk, I didn't know that that's what I was doing. Right. Now, why, I, didn't why that you that say was, that? I didn't I know that's what I was even supposed to be doing. Why do you say that? Because when you asked me that, when we did that shoot at mm -hmm. OU, do I see myself or somewhere I come from in my work? That was mm -hmm. the first time that ever crossed my fucking mind. Um, uh, so in so up until 21, what mm -hmm. I was doing was all subconscious. Right. So the interest. So can you can you talk about the before and after? Well, that before before be that conversation, and then what came after? Well, before the conversation, I was about we was probably about twenty one when we had that conversation. Mm -hmm. So before twenty one, you know, I was already in pursuit of being an artist, like heavily in pursuit of being an artist. I didn't really know what that meant, but I definitely was pursuing it. So. You know, I was in a very school-based kind of a behavior. Academic. You know, I get an assignment, and I'm going to get an A on that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was it. Mm -hmm. So when I really looked at, when you asked me that question, what it did instantly is it made me evaluate my work up until that point. And it was like, oh, my portfolio is a raw-ass portfolio full of technical exercises. 
Damn, this shit cut out? Somebody shit load me. Hey, can y'all still hear me or y'all can't hear neither one of us? Barn left. Oh, so Barn left. So I don't know what he doing. I don't know what happened, but he said he's going to go away and he's going to come back. So, yeah. So before he, this, before he asked me if I ever seen myself or somewhere I come, come from in my work, it was like, no, nah, I never thought about that. I ain't never had no teacher asking me to think about where I come from and trying to tell me to articulate it. So for me, literally Barn asking me that question really, really changed the, it changed the way I was seeing what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably like a junior or a senior in college at the time feeling like, oh, I ain't saying shit. Like I'm just taking pictures and getting good grades on the assignments. But how do I see myself or somewhere I come from in the work is what I started trying to figure out. And that I've been trying to figure that out. Um, you know, I figured that out all the way moving back to Cleveland. So at the point after Barn didn't ask me that question, you know, I'm shooting like a slavery series is what I started trying to create. It trips me out that that's what I did after me and him had that conversation. Just because, let me see, Barn and Ali sent the request. Hold on, let me tap him back in. I think uh, I think my moderator on his way back, y'all. Yo, my bad, man. These whack phones, man. Oh no, are you good? I told yeah, I, I I told everybody you. I mean, I know what you meant when you said it's gonna go out and then it's gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, so, uh, so you were saying that it started. It made you value your whole body of work. Did you kind of fill in that blank, or are we still on there? Yeah, we kind of still there. But I, that's pretty much what I was saying. It made me okay. evaluate all my work to the point where it was like I ain't talk about nothing. That's what I got to. When you asked me that, that's what I had to be honest with myself about and say I ain't talking about shit. So that's why I started shooting the slavery series. Right. Right. And what's so crazy and about that? that is that series mm -hmm. was the beginning of the 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 my teacher situation is looking at me different. How so? Well, my high school teacher just kind of flipped past those images. And then in college, when I submitted that body of work for the student show, mm -hmm. they called me and told me I had to come pick it up before the opening. I don't know if you remember that. They censored me out of that show at OU for that shit. I think I do remember I I do remember that. And that was when race got activated like mm. really activated because that was the first time I was experiencing it in a way that I wasn't familiar with right, right. you know what I mean it wasn't no police what no 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 teacher what no authority so situation first. with being white people right it was like hey you need to come pick this up and I'm thinking like dang you just, they just gonna they can just take it out huh that's what I remember asking Gary and he was like yeah you just gotta come get it. it's gonna be easier if you come pick it up what was, and so, I mean, prior to that moment, what was the response to your work from the university? Uh, the work from the university, very much so that I'm like the standout student. Mm -hmm. um, they love the work. Uh, none of the white kids wanted to talk about how good they thought the pictures was. They would all say, I'm not saying it this week. I'm not picking down those images this week. So I was very... Race was in my face, man. Like, I didn't know I was taking pictures of black people until I was the only person putting a black person on the board with 30 kids. Mm -hmm. So it was real. Honestly, it was consistent. It was like, oh, Donald, you the best student. You ain't about to get none of these awards. You ain't about to get none of these scholarships. And I, the whole time, I thought it was something wrong with me. Like, I thought it was something that I was doing or something that I wasn't doing. In terms of technique? Or no, well... No, not in terms of technique. When I was in college, the way they was breaking it down and explaining it, they were saying that art was broken down into two different direct, two tracks, conceptual and technical. So I was able to see my grades. My technical grades was always an A. You know, lighting, exposure, prints, dark room, all that shit. Conceptual, it was always at the very least a C, C minus 
for the most part. So I might get a. What was the, fee oh, what what feedback? Was the feedback? The feedback in terms of the concept, like what, 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 what was some of the, you know. Well, they, was, they, they said I wasn't saying nothing because I didn't know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Up until my junior, senior year, I wasn't saying nothing other than I could take pictures raw as fuck. Mm -hmm. That's literally all I was saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the assignments was generic right. assignments, so I'm doing generic ass shit. Ain't nobody saying to me, do you see yourself in your work, Donald? Right. That right. nobody challenging my imagination like that. Not conceptually. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting? I, I don't. I, I I know that when I asked you that question, I was asking the same question to myself, right? Right. You know, I was asking, um, you know, because you know the interesting thing about OU. So, you know, when I started uh, teaching, I had a um, professor who would come to visit with his wife in New York, and he said, Barnabas, how do you feel? your education was at OU. I said, you guys taught us how to be artists. You guys didn't teach us how to survive as artists. Mm. And I, I, you know, there, you know, you do have the technique, you have the way to present, you know, your work and design your work and create the work. But, and I remember even like producing pages for the students that were in my classes to read and modifying and tweaking the language so that they could understand it. They could say it. They could speak it. Mm. And it took me to, you know, really, really, you know what I'm saying? It's different, like, you know, being around, you know, everybody that we was around, James, Jason, JG, everybody, you know, it's different being around y'all and, 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 you know, understanding what y'all are listening to in terms of music and how y'all dressing and that shit. But it's a difference when you listening to a motherfucker and you hearing language, the rhythm of language and what people are, the covert and coded language that we inherited from the environment. You know, like you started off talking about the environment and I needed to really hear how the hustlers talk and how they were speaking poetry without knowing that they were speaking poetry and how they were speaking in code because you know, they didn't have any outside voices or outside um uh, that outside gaze, uh, the white gaze, like Toni Morrison would say, to right. influence how they how their language was being said and manipulated, you know? Right. Um, so I think, you know, when I asked you, when I presented that question to you, it was more or less to say, like, is anybody else? Like, I don't really know a lot of black. I mean, like, you was the only black artist that I was really fucking with when we was in school because, like, you know, you know, we had known each other for for the longest time. It's like, yeah, you know, we had Sean in the theater department, but I think Sean had graduated by that time. Right. Um. All right. I think Sean had... is work going on. I think Sean. Had oh, graduated. look! I'm like, oh, they don't want us to talk. They don't want. Nah, us to nah, do nah, this. nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Sean had graduated at the time, and um, so you were the only person I was with, like day in, day out, trying to figure out, like, yo, how do we live this shit? You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, I needed a sounder board. I needed somebody else to be like, yeah, you know, like, this is how I express, you know, my, my, my personal view and perspective of the world through my art. And I'm just like, you know, because as a, as a writer and as a playwright, you're pulling from so much. And I'm sure you put, you, you know what I'm saying? You And I, I was just, like, open, like, yo, if, if Donald's pulling from a whole bunch of shit, yo, I need somebody to, 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 to package their idea in a certain – Package their idea through this conversation in a way that I could, you know, relate to, you know? Right. Um, so, so photography as a chosen medium, because you're not just a photographer. Right. Yeah, photography was really me just trying to fucking focus. What do you mean? Well, at the time where I declared my major as solely photography, I was like in boys dance at School of the Arts. I was in the orchestra. I was doing all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I was doing so much at School of the Arts. Um it was and I always had, and I was getting in a lot of trouble about focusing. You know, my mother was on me like, you gotta focus, 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 finish what you start. You know, this was shit that I really I got in nasty ass trouble for not yeah. finishing what I was starting. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah yeah. yeah. Like she was really on me about that kind of shit. So it was like, okay, well I can't do art, visual art. I ain't about to be drawing no more because I can't. I don't fuck with my homeroom teacher. So if he gonna be my high school art teacher, it's perfect for me to change my major right now. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what I did. And, you know, it was, it was really about focus, you know, and it was, a, and it was, I, I had to compartmentalize a lot. You know, I miss drawing bad as fuck, but I ain't never talked to nobody about that kind of shit. Like I was drawing every day and that shit was like, you know, some old coping mechanism shit. Like for me, I didn't, I didn't come into being an artist, one, trying to be an artist or having a clue to what it was. You know, I kind of had developed this crazy obsession so early that I was, I was looking at the landscape, really evaluating who knew what they was talking about and who didn't. Right. You know, because I'm saying, well, what is an artist? But it's like, I don't necessarily believe what you're saying because you ain't really communicating nothing to me that's telling me that you even know what that is. Right. Look, it can come like I'm talking about that. One second. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, it was... It was that. So it was that. You know, and, and being from Cleveland to say I'm an artist, what the fuck does that mean? Shit, that I mean I for, make for, shit. For a layman, <laughs> let's let's say let's say for everyday walk around motherfucker from Cleveland, when you say I'm an artist, what's the what's the, what's the what's the perception of what that means? Oh, that I paint and draw and shit. People don't mm -hmm. even know artists is multiple disciplines and genres for the most part. Okay. You know, the the word artist seems to lean heavily on visual art. Okay. And so you ask somebody, well, who's your favorite music artist? And they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, so I'm interested, you know, because, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to put a, put a, uh, bookmark on that right okay um and so, so we were after was... after uh yeah, hold up look 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 you like uh, she like was you doing ballet i was i was learning how to plie and releve <laughs> but i dropped out when they said i had to wear tights with no underwear <laughs> so when i had jogging pants and basketball shorts and socks i was good but i couldn't imagine myself being in the little changing room with other twelve year olds with no drawers on. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was easy for me to leave dance alone. Right, right, right. <laughs> so like I'll see you later, Mr. Wade. I'm cool. That's funny. <laughs> so you you twenty one, you had this conversation, you and I right. about your voice as an artist. Right. Fast forward two or three years, we in Jersey City. Right. New York. Talk right. about that. Well, so once I realized I was only having technical experiences with the camera, mm -hmm. I decided to package my fashion portfolio up and go to New York, mm -hmm. but take pictures of nothing. And like not nothing like nothing at all, but like take pictures for no reason. Like, I, I wanted to learn what I was attracted to. Like, literally. Like, I'm going to take pictures for no reason. Right. You know, because I felt like I had bought into this reason to take pictures in college. And then it all revealed itself as a lie to me. So, I'm going to take pictures for no reason. That's what I was doing my time in Jersey City and in New York. Mm -hmm. Was really like, let me just take pictures. And then I'm going to look at the pictures and see what the pictures is telling me to do next. Okay. That's literally what I was doing. What you know, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, for the most part, Jersey City, New York, <clears throat> I, I guess I kind of was seeing what I was made of, in a way. How do you you know, know, I was hustling the fuck out of photography, easily. Mm -hmm. Like, I was undercutting the market, you know, by 50%, and I'm 23, so I'm making $500 a person, shooting sometimes maybe 10 people headshots and shit like that a week. You know, working out a dark room three, four days a week. Like, so for me, it was kind of like all this stuff that I had learned how to do, I was able to really put it to the test to figure out if I could make money doing it. Right. But I wouldn't, but I wouldn't say none of that stuff was art. You know, I started conceptually trying to figure out how to do something similar to the slavery series where I had this, uh, this I created this discomfort. Like I made images that was making me uncomfortable or the person who was looking at them uncomfortable. And I just was trying to, I was experimenting with what I was shooting. You know, that's when I started shooting the minstrel show shit. 
You so know, I shot a lot of news during that time. My bad. Right. So when you say uncomfortable, um, why express that in that way? Well, because what I realized is that the stuff, the images that were just coming to my imagination mm -hmm. that made me nervous, the thought of actually shooting them and making them mm -hmm. was a new, it was a new experience for me. Okay. You know, prior to moving to New York and all that, my seven, eight years into photography, I literally was taking pretty pictures. I mean, that's what was required of me. So that's what I did took pretty pictures. So for me to be rejecting all of my training and feeling some kind of way about it, every it was all about discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know, because once I showed that slavery series to one of my teachers, I could tell that she was uncomfortable. And I remember getting ready to shoot it and being uncomfortable. So it was like I was I was following the feeling of discomfort and I was learning how to how to talk to it. But I didn't, you know, and then I just started getting better and better at it. So I was like scrapping my portfolio. Fuck fashion. I can make money doing this. But what is it that I'm trying to say? With no clue to how to figure out what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Until I was starting, until I got to the point of thinking about what I wasn't saying. And that was a big, long ass list. Well, um, what's the short list of what you weren't saying? Uh, I wasn't saying nothing about myself. Mm -hmm. That's the short list. So I was not expressing, I didn't see myself or anything, anywhere I came from reflected in my work. Okay. I didn't see that stuff. Um, but you didn't stay in Jersey City? Nope. Nope, I didn't stay. Okay. Because um, I, was, I was there about five years, and all of the galleries and all the museums I went to, some of the stuff that stood out the most was it was, it was motherfuckers from all over the world, from these little small places, smaller than Cleveland, mm -hmm. showing they work at these huge museums, talking about where they was from. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, shit, I don't need to be here. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to move back to Cleveland when I'm 80, then the Cleveland Museum of Art to finally collect one of my pieces, and then i die before I ever get to see that shit go up on the wall. Because that's what they teach you is your, is your, is your uh, you know, that's your journey as a, as a visual artist. So I said, well, what could be more creative than going back to Cleveland at 28? So that's what I did. Because I felt like what, what I had like? to talk about, I left it here. And what was that like? What's that, Coming moving back, back to Cleveland? Mm -hmm. Shit, it was uh coming back, being back, you know, all that shit. Yeah, coming back was all of it was great. You know, I was the inner city kid going good. I had I had everybody around me rooting for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was hard because I knew people would think that I came back because I couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. But I was already ready to just kind of take that on the chin, keep that one in. You know what I'm saying? Um Yeah. I was, I'm, I moved back and, you know, my mind was moving, you know, a thousand miles a minute faster than it was when I left. Um, it seemed like what was a blank, open, empty canvas with nobody like me in it. And I figured that I was going to relink with all of the relationships so I can figure out how I was going to influence the work. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So, Shit, everybody wanted me here. Open arms. I can go get food. Nigga called me over to eat. I can go get spaghetti over my aunt's house. You know, this was mm -hmm. cheers. You know, I was, I was, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you want to go where everybody know your name. You know, I, I could pop that, into bro. a gas station, riding up and down the street, and it's kind of like my face ain't changed or something because everybody like Donald, Donald. So all that shit was, it was, it was feeding me energy in a way that the art world wasn't. Did you see Cleveland different? At that moment? When I moved back? Mm -hmm. Did I see Cleveland different than what? Than when I left? Mm. When you know you're a photographer, so you know everything is about perspective. Right. right? And so you had one perspective come, you know, leaving. And then you yeah, I was, back. I would say, I wouldn't say I seen it different. I would say that I could see it. Mm -hmm. You know, so not from one thing to another thing, but more like, you know, 
blurred, and then it was like the shit was coming in focus. You know, I was able to see it in a way that I hadn't been able to see it. I mean, uh, look, Ali, like I'm so glad you came home. <laughs> <laughs> so you were able Me to too. see. It. <laughs> you said what? So you were able to see it. I mean, I was like, able what to was see it. And what and what was what what and what did that site reveal? It revealed that I was I'm a I'm a fucking ancestor of the the lowdown folks, the slaves. Mm -hmm. It revealed that oh, ain't none of this shit done change. Oh, that this is what I'm supposed to be doing with the work. So we're using this shit as a weapon. We still at the war. We ain't free. Use a nigga. Oh, all y'all African Americans got tricked. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was that. That's what it was revealing. It was revealing that everything that they was telling me that I was suspicious of, mm -hmm. I should have been suspicious of the whole time. Because right. it was all a fucking lie. Right. Why? Because I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the good kid. You know what I'm saying? The good kids supposed to, the way they the way they painted the picture is the good kids supposed to have a different experience than the bad kid, right? You know what I'm saying? So I realized like, oh okay, y'all been lying to us, and y'all can't really hear people that y'all been caught in one of y'all traps. So let me put my opinion out there and share my perspective. Because I feel the same way as a lot of these motherfuckers who done got caught by a lot of the tracks. Right. You know. Because y'all still I, on the same, y'all still on, running the same race. Exactly. Same game. Exactly. Exactly. You, you know, you just, you know, you might have seen somebody else fall and you was jumping over that pitfall, you know, a, a split second before, you know. The exactly. The next person fell behind you. Exactly. So. Pretending like I don't see him. Pretending like I don't care. But knowing I'm just, I'm running for you know, the reserves, where where the where the where the rescue team at? Like I'm still right. running trying to find the rescue team. Leaking at the same time. You know, just hemorrhaging like just, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so talk about that that first uh, studio space. First studio space, Lee Road. That shit was raw. It was okay. raw because it was like it was the first time I was public. You know what I'm saying? It was the first time people would just ride by and pop up. You know, so it was a lot of people Going up and down Lee Road, everybody stopped by. Whole lot of family, whole lot of friends, whole lot of old relationships. Um, but you know, the, the flip side, I was sleeping in the motherfucking warehouse mm -hmm. with bad heat with a puppy. Me and this nigga slept under the blanket every night, type shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really want to be in nobody else's space. I ain't want to be a bother to nobody. So that's where I, I stayed in that shop, and the shop was good until that motherfucker got broken into. Somebody stole all my cameras. Right. Right. So then it was like, that was, you know, a setback. Yeah. Nice little setback. And they wouldn't sell me the building, so I bounced. Because it was like, I don't want to just, y'all business been closed. Y'all ain't got no money in here. I'm fixing stuff. I'm repairing stuff. Y'all ain't going to sell me the building. I need to do something else with my $600 a month. Mm -hmm. So I found me a house. So, you, you said you said something about being a burden. Yeah. What do, you, what, what do you mean? You know, I don't know. You kind of grow up, you know, in our environment, and it seemed like the person who can't figure it out is the man. You know what I'm saying? Like, from family members who got a crash, and, you know, uncle get out of jail, he comes stay with us, dad can't figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in a, I'm in a world of what Donald is perceiving is men who can't figure it out. Mind you, the influence is a female dominated environment. So I'm seeing it and I'm being taught how to see that, that experience, you know? So I'm seeing it as they can't figure it out. So I know it looked like Donald failed in New York. So now he moved back to Cleveland. He's sleeping on his granddad couch. You know what I'm saying? Basically living out of a fucking car. So ultimately I already knew that that, that my perception saw it as couldn't figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I didn't want it, I didn't want nobody to feel like they was responsible for me and nothing that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I mean by burden. I didn't want to be a grown ass responsibility for another grown motherfucker. <laughs> right. So I was living in some pretty challenging conditions. Yeah, but that yeah. Them, somebody, I mean, somebody, and, and your tools, 
Yeah. Got, got lifted. Yeah, they just stole all my shit. You know, you know, I done went back to school of the arts. So I met the wizard who ain't no wizard. And I was behind the curtain to figure out that don't none of them buttons even work no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, all this shit is a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, so to go back and meet the teachers who see me as a teacher, revealing to me how they look at the students that go to that school, all mm. that shit was, I was offended by everything. Mm. Everything was, everything was offending me. You know, I got teachers saying shit like, oh yeah, Donald, you know, you dealing with the upper end of poverty here and the burden, the baggage that these kids carry around will weigh on you in ways that you will never imagine. You know, and I got a, a teacher mentor saying this to me when I'm like, oh, I think I might have to leave. Yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's because they got these niggas got baggage. And I'm sitting here like, no, it ain't bad. I live with the niggas that got baggage. Everybody around me got this nigga baggage you talk about. <laughs> I got to leave because I'm going to hate this place. Yeah. I said, and I can't afford to hate this place. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bounce. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not going to let them use me through you you know that type shit so for that experience it was kind of like oh, okay i gotta i gotta get away from y'all so it sounded like you was asking you was asking the question i asked you at 21 so just so so um so for, for the folks who, who've been kind of tuning in and coming in, um, I'm Barnabas uh, Crosby, Cleveland native. Donald and I have been knowing each other for 25 years now. Um, spent the greater part of our development um, trying to figure out how to live and exist as artists and, um, you know, live together, live apart, and, you know, just always maintain a close uh, relationship. Um, not only as friends, but as artists. Um, so, um, so for, if you guys are just tuning in and joining us, you know, thank you, welcome, and all that shit. So, I asked you this question at 21. How do you see yourself in, in your work and in your art? You 29 at this point? 30? Yep, almost um, 30 at the time. Uh, almost 30 years old at the time. And it seemed like that question was revisiting you. No, no, no. The question never escaped me. Mm. I've been obsessing over that question since the day it got asked. Mm. So by 29, I'm in pursuit back to Cleveland to see myself reflected in the world mm. so I could photograph it. Mm. <laughs> like I came here looking for that shit. Mm. It felt like I wasn't going to find myself or somewhere I come from reflected in my work until I moved back to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Because I recognized that I was in New York, not as a tourist. I was in New York hustling, and all of the major pictures that I made at that time period, I made them in Cleveland. Right, right. So that's what was really crazy, that the going back and forth, living in New York and visiting Cleveland, the significant images that I was making all had a Cleveland backdrop. That's what I noticed when I was really evaluating the work. It was like, oh, I need to be there. I don't need to be here. So, you know, one of the things, you know, like, um, I remember a couple years ago, I guess about four years ago now, when I had come to Cleveland for that month, um, it wasn't, a, it was not an easy time for me. You know, especially the things that I had going on here, and, you know, my mom was, uh, you know, my mother is a battery charger in so many different ways, you know what I'm saying? But you got to find that outlet to plug yeah. yourself into. <laughs> right. You were challenging me in some crazy, phenomenal ways. Um, that wasn't an easy uh, experience, but for, 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 for good reason. Um, what's up, Ian? Um, and, you know, the, one of the things that I, I remember you talking about is just the, the art world. Right, Cleveland's art world. Cleveland art world. Can, can yeah. you talk about that? Um, Cleveland's art world functions like all of the worlds that we got to participate in underneath a worldwide white supremacy racism structure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't none, ain't none of it no escape from that. 
You know what I'm saying? It's it's a, it's a boys club. That's what it is. And they, they recruiting the good kids who have a desire to be African-Americans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you break that term down, African-American? Well, when I the way I use African-American is um, I use it, and I'm usually referring to black people who are trying to get close proximity to white people. You know, so that's what I mean. I, I, the people who done, you know, they, you know, they got the Aronson Machine voice mastered, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. the ones who, you know, then, then, then shook that, that, that nigga off of them. You know, they figured out how to tuck it, hide it, cover it up, button it up, got the right cologne, whatever it is. They done figured out how to, how to be around white people without making them uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that. And I always still, say African-American just so I can justify using the word nigga. <laughs> <laughs> because... You African-American, I'm a nigga. <laughs> I get it, I get it. <laughs> right. You know, them African-Americans find themselves in the sunken place. You know what I'm the saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to that flash, yeah, snap yeah, yeah. on, and they snap out of it. You feel mm -hmm. me? <laughs> so, you know... um, you know, one of the things that really, uh, so so one of the worst, one of the things that's really really striking me about what you're doing now, and you know, you use the term niggas, mm -hmm. and you know, for a long time I divorced myself from from that word. I, I, I know you used to be the one you was you was the you was the you was seen as the weird nigga who be <laughs> say black man black man. Don't call me that. You know, you was that's that's who you were to yeah, yeah, the, yeah. at least the college and, and landscape. Me, yeah, and it took me a that's... long time to realize, like, yo, it's a you know, and when people say, Oh, it's a term of endearment, like, you know, like I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, but it speaks well, to the uh, essence of like who you are and what you come from. And I and I know that shit, and you know, it's like, you know, as a quote unquote learned person. For me to say that shit, it, it, it boggles my mind. But it's like, yo, when you said, when we started the converse, this conversation, you said a rap. Mm -hmm. My nigga sensibility understood that shit. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> right? right? So, you know, so like, so like, you know, here I am almost, you know, I'll be 40 this year. I guess we'll both be 40 this year. Um, but you 40, are, no, no, you 40 already. Nope. No, we so yeah, we both Still in my thirties. Right, right, right. We so we both be forty this year and it's like it took me, you know, I guess thirty seven, thirty eight years for for me to realize like, yo, barn, like there's some shit woven in the fabric of who you are. And some you know words don't express it no other way. That just don't express it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like when motherfuckers say, you know, like they say, one of the first things they did to Africans when they enslaved Africans was to take their language from them, right? Right. And so when a black person says... What? What you mean what? True. I, I, you, hey, you look. Know, that's my mom, you know. So when a black person <laughs> says the word S-H-I-T and he take and he add a couple extra short, short out vowel sounds from shit to shit, you know what they saying. You know right. what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with when with, with the word nigga, but like like you, you know what I'm saying? Like if somebody just come up and pick your, you know, your 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 blunt, your Dutch, your joint out your fucking ass, right? You be like, nigga. You understand what it means. Yeah. Um so, you know, you talked about the art world, you talked about the dealings with that, you talked about, you know, navigating that. You know, and, and it's you know, you use the the, the term good kid. Right. More than a few times. Right. Do you feel like that tag is still on you? What, the good kid? Yeah. To the bad kids, yep. <laughs> How like, my, my real population of people still mm -hmm. see me as the good kid. Donald right. the square. Donald don't get no trouble. Donald ain't, he ain't never on no shit. Mm -hmm. That's what the bad kids would say. Right. But I would argue that the art world mm -hmm. sees me the same way they see all black folks as okay. niggas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they see me as everything that they didn't ever read about. Donald is angry. Donald is challenging. 
Y'all know this. Not about to just sit and take y'all shit, man. Mm -hmm. Like this is that. Mm -hmm. So if that's what, if I don't know, like that's that's who I am. Right. You know, I'm the one that was able to be in this concentration of shit mm -hmm. and go through it mm -hmm. with a way to heal myself from the damage. Mm -hmm. What do you mean damage? Damage, you know, poverty, mm -hmm. you know, racism, police, you know, mm -hmm. inner city, just, just all of it, just born into a certain condition. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was born in the projects. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was being dropped in a puddle and kidnapped as a newborn. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With family members being cut up and all kinds of crazy shit. Right. You know, and this shit happened before I even remember, but the reality is I represent that demographic of people. Mm -hmm. And I and I recognize that being the good kid, you know, the kid being taken out of the class and taken on field trips and all girls and all that kind of shit that I'm always with. I'm like the only little boy around me not getting in no trouble. Right. Meaning I'm the only little boy around me not expressing himself naturally to his circumstance and his condition. Mm. I was able to be abnormal. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so when yeah. I'm hearing, when I, when I even think about good kid now, it's like, okay, what was I really good at? Mm. Oh, I was good at holding it all in. Mm -hmm. I was good at suppressing it. Mm -hmm. I didn't disagree with the little boy who flipped the chair over. I just thought he was stupid because he was going to get in trouble. Right, right, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's two two different, two 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 things I want to I wanna break down. I, I do want to talk about holding it in. But before I talk that, I want to talk, well, yeah. So I want to talk about poverty right. and the artist. Okay. All right, poverty and the artist? Yeah, just however you choose to attack that. Shit, I mean, poverty and the artist. It's easy to hustle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you... You know what I'm saying? Because you learn early that you can make stuff. So you start making this stuff and you start making money. Mm -hmm. Depend if you if you me. You know, I was, I was selling love. I was making the friendship bracelets and shit for, as football team colors. You know what I'm saying? So I was I was already on that shit early mm -hmm. with, you know, selling my artwork. My uncle was buying my drawings. So poverty and artists made me know how to survive off of it easily. Okay. Um yeah. And 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 I and I and I probably I don't know. I wanna jump back to holding it in. Okay. You know. Why hold it in? What was the consequence and outcome of that? Um, you know, did you ever cease to hold it in? Oh, yeah. Well, see, holding it in was the necessary thing for me to survive at the time. Okay. Um, I didn't want any of the consequences that I seen coming from not holding it in. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking extreme from fighting to drawing crazy pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in tune as much as I could have been as a child because I remember the little boy got in trouble for drawing knives and blood. You know, but when I seen him drawing, I got excited. Like, oh, I can draw guns because I remember this shit just happening around me, blah, blah, blah. But when they took him to the office and I don't remember him coming back, it was like, oh, yeah, I ain't going to draw that. Where them horses at? <laughs> Where them birds at? <laughs> right. You know, so Blue flowers and shit. I feel like what happened is for me to be really good at holding in my emotions, mm -hmm. letting them out subconsciously, creatively, in multiple different ways, and continuing to pursue the journey of being an artist, mm -hmm. what wound up happening is that pursuit mm -hmm. stopped me from being able to hold it in. Mm -hmm. It was almost like the more I got engulfed into becoming an artist and making art, the more I was not able to hold in the stuff that I didn't even know I was holding in. It was like, I'm literally taking myself on a journey of bubbling everything up mm -hmm. to the point where it was kind of like, I'm tired of being scared to say what the fuck is on my mind. Mm -hmm. And my fear was always because I, I was scared I was going to do damage with what the fuck I had to say. People seem to take my opinion and take my advice 
And if I did it, it meant the world. If somebody else did it, it didn't mean shit. Mm -hmm. I, I I didn't want I couldn't I couldn't handle that early on. And I would argue that maybe around 2013, I consciously said, anytime I feel myself holding something in, I'm gonna say it. I remember being at a show, white lady and curated the show. I'm the only nigga in the show, which means, you know, 90% of the 10 niggas that was at the show to see the show was there for me. Mm. And people come up to me like, Donald, man, why they put the picture behind the door? Why they got their stuff behind the door like tough? And I'm already feeling some kind of way. White lady comes to me like, Donald, you know, how you doing? You don't seem like you're doing too good. How you feeling? I'm like, honestly, I feel like I want to just smash all this shit off the fucking wall. That's what I feel like right now. I feel like I just want to hold my arm off and just run around the room and just smash everything out the wall. And that was a that was an early glimpse of me not holding it in. Because it was kind of like, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm feeling, and I'm like vibrating. I'm so angry. So it was like I started letting little, little shit out, little by little, to Were the you... point where the shit just said, oh, now we all the way out. You don't, you don't hold it in at no more at all. Were you able to channel or harness that at all in any way? Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been channeling and harnessing it since I've been experiencing it. So maybe for the, like the last seven years, that's what I've been doing. Learn to channel the stuff that I've been suppressing. So when people looking at my work, like, oh, your work is violent. Oh, it seems angry. Oh, it seems this. I'm like, yes. You know, that's my grade. <laughs> It's like, that's what I'm trying to communicate. So if this shit is making right. you uncomfortable, making you not want to look at it, making you think Donald is different, then, yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, I've been able to channel all of it. And then what I started... Doing... Is I've been using my conversation as my artist statement. What, I, what I've been holding in is what's really on my mind. What I've been holding in is my voice. <laughs> right, right. Uh, no. One, one second. So, um, where do you feel <laughs> your art is going right now? Where is it going? It's what is going it doing right down now? that. Listen, you know let, let, it's before you answer that question. This, what is it doing right now? What the work? Yeah, not. Before we say where is it going, what is it doing right now? Right now, it's making some people excited and making other people uncomfortable. Okay. It's got a life of its own. It's moving in 20 different directions. And I'm still keeping all of it in a little too much all at the same time. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Why you say that? I mean, I, I got 2 million photographs. I got 70 terabytes of digital information. Mm-hmm. And I'd have been trained to pursue down. the journey of being an artist in an out of date model. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why I say is like I've been trained to wait for the opportunity of right. being invited. You know, you keep making the work, keep showing people you're prolific, and then you're gonna get invited to do a show, invited to be on a panel. So a lot of this, a lot of this shit's still sitting on the shelf, man. A lot of it is. How do you, how are you, I, I guess, you know, conjuring your own personal satisfaction with the work that you're doing, that you, that's not being seen and that you wait to get in, but you know, like, how do you, how, how are you balancing all that? I can't balance it. That shit make me want to flip out every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I ain't been able to balance it. I ain't, I've been having a harder time now accepting what I clearly had an easy time accepting at 18 is that ain't none of this shit, none of this systematic stuff is really designed to be challenged the way me and my work challenges it or exposes it. So it just kind of feel like I'm all the way left field with, you know, just, just in fucking emptiness, trying to figure out how to call everybody over to me because mm -hmm. they ain't about to do it. Where do you think um, the work is going? Where do I think it's going? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I can think of a hundred places it could go, but I don't know where it's going. 
you know, I remember, um, you know, I didn't get the chance to to to, uh, to see the show that you did at the um, at the museum, and I remember seeing the photos, you know, that were popping up on social media, and I remember seeing like white folks standing next to the work. I said, man, these niggas is towering over these white folks, man. Exactly. And that shit made me, like, it touched me in a certain kind of way. Mm, gotcha. I said, man, that's, that's, that, that right there, you know, because, you know, because I, you know, I, I definitely felt the firm, you know, not only because not and and it, and not because you know you're a friend of mine. I felt the firm because I said them motherfuckers I saw every day of my life for the first eighteen years of my life. Them the motherfuckers I see when I go back home and I drive up and down the fucking street. Right. Like that when I do go home, like you said, you go to the gas station, you see motherfuckers I ain't seen you in a long time. You know? Right. And um, you know. And it was like a, a like a like a small victory for for impoverished black folk, you know, right? Um, you know, for them to be able to stand tall and tower over, you know, mm-hmm. to not to not to not perceive themselves as as small, man. Mm-hmm. So I yeah, because I ain't did what I'm gonna I ain't did what I'm gonna do. Right. <laughs> this is, this has been me just testing the water and seeing seeing what it can take. And right. I just had to accept that it ain't gonna be able to take it, and that's just too bad. Right, right. Um, do you um? So, what uh? Just, just you know, for for the so it's a, we got a couple people that joined in. I see. Right. Um, some people, you know, that that's familiar with you. Some people that are not familiar with you. You know, this is a, a conversation with a good friend of mine, Donald Black Jr photographer, um, you know, just a dope-ass dude that I've been knowing my whole fucking life, um, my brother. Um, and we're talking about just, you know, what it means to, you know, have this journey as a as a, as an artist with this skin color, you know? Right. And the challenges that, that, that come about with, with dealing with that, you know? So mm. <laughs> Donald Black Jr., Daily routine, because you talk about practice a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you say my daily routine? Yeah, I mean, what you practice right now? Shit, I'm getting good at pool. You know, my old man didn't die. Nigga then came and blessed the room. Told me the room was gonna be able to fit my pool table. So I done brought a pool table home in pieces and put it together and changed all the shit on it. So I practice that all day. Mm-hmm. So I'm always trying to master something new. So I'm constantly in routine with mastering something. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really want to get good at something and then I just stick to that. I want to continue to be reminded of what it means not to know how to do something and what it takes to get good at it. Right. So right now that's pool. Shooting pool, in my mind, that's how my dad made money. So it's sharpening my perspective a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's, that's, that's got a nice little balance for me. But my daily routine, shooting pool, uh, popping a willy, uh, and then I spend a lot of time looking through these images, you know what I'm saying, on a computer. I spend a lot of time in conversation, writing notes, recording my conversations, editing video, editing pictures. It's kind of like I just tell myself when I don't know what to do, I just keep doing that. You know, I try to stay away from a lot of motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Try to hold in some of this energy. Right, right, right. But yeah, my daily routine is always going back at it. You know, I wake up ready to attack it again every morning. Who you doing this for? Hmm? Who you doing this for? See, I'm doing this for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to save myself, man. You know, they made that whole picture. They painted that whole picture of saving everybody and being the one and all that kind of stuff. Honestly, man, I'm the kid that I'm trying to save. Mm -hmm. I just really want to be available to people while I'm doing it. And if they can get something from it, you know, that's just affirmation for me. 
But the reality is, 